I welcome everyone on Zoom, on Facebook, or whatever platform you're joining to this special program titled The Redeemed of the Law. We have been on it since Sunday with teaching and fasting and prayer started on Monday. Today is day three, and our focus today is the covenant of the blood of Jesus that is called the everlasting covenant, the everlasting covenant or the new covenant. Let us build on what we have done so far. We have established that by the law of input and output, this world as it is today was not like this from the beginning. God created Adam and Eve and put them in the Garden of Eden and everything was very good. Satan brought sin through Adam into the world and sin brought death and all the accompanying evils, sickness, diseases, name them, poverty. And God Almighty, through his son Jesus Christ, has redeemed us. Therefore, restoring us back to, number one, the, um, the broken fellowship. That broken fellowship, we have been restored back to unbroken fellowship. The unbroken relationship with him, God, through his son, Jesus Christ. If that has been done, then what else? Number two, he has destroyed through Jesus Christ the power of Satan and the power of sin. On Monday, we dealt with the issues of sin. On Tuesday, we dealt with the issue of uh, the power of darkness. And today, we want to deal, look at the covenant. I want to start by making this categorical statement. Note it, that our redemption is backed up by the cover, everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. Our redemption is backed up by a covenant, and that covenant is the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, what is covenant? Covenant is an agreement between two or more parties for a specific purpose, usually under seal, agreement or a promise, a contract between two or more people, parties, usually under seal for a specific purpose, for a specific purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. So covenant has three main components, and it could be four. Number one, the purpose of the covenant. The purpose, why that covenant? The purpose of the covenant. Number two, the terms of the covenant, which are also called the conditions. Number three, the token or sign of the covenant. Something to show that there is a covenant. In some part of the world, you would hear or you will see some signs and mark on people. And in some areas, like the areas where we are, you've been aware, police going after people, and they tell them to open their bodies. And if they see certain marks on them, they know they belong to certain groups. That is because they have entered into a covenant and they have received the token, the sign of that covenant. So I've talked about purpose of covenant, terms of covenant, the token and sign of the covenant. And number four, important thing is the seal of the covenant, the seal of the covenant. What is the power behind that covenant? What is the seal of this covenant? Praise the name of the Lord. And now when we are talking about the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus, 
because it is a testament like a will, then somebody has to bring it to pass. Call the mediator. And Jesus Christ is the mediator of the new covenant between God and man. Hallelujah. We will come back to all this. So we have been redeemed. Our redemption is backed up by a covenant called the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. As we said, after man fell and God reigned all the consequences of man's disobedience upon man and the earth, God didn't leave man in that state. And so God came to a man called Abraham, Abraham. That is why when people don't understand the Bible, they get confused with the way Bible is called New Testament and Old Testament. And they confuse that with the New Covenant and the Old Covenant. The old covenant, we talk about the specific covenant given to Moses for the children of Israel, which was just a symbol to lead us to, to teach us things, the principle of Christ till the real deal comes, which is Jesus Christ. But the covenant itself, the covenant of the blood of Jesus has already been instituted by God as a promise to Abraham. God started it as a promise to Abraham. So let's start that journey very quickly. From Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, I read very quickly. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Three, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. That's powerful, isn't it? And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Look at that. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Remember, God curse and give appropriate punishment to man, to the woman, to the serpent, and the, even the earth. Now God said, I will bless all the families of the earth, through whom Abraham. Move to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17. And we'll read from verse 1 to 11, but I may have to stop at 7 at this point. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Three. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. Did you see that? God again reaffirmed, father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. You can actually link it back to the first, as uh, um, uh, Genesis 12, 3, Father of all nations. Six, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be God. Look at that. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Praise the name of the Lord. I think I should just read to 11, so we'll move on. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, 
as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So this is specific. Nine, and God said to Abraham, his name has been changed from Abraham to Abraham, the father from whom all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse nine, and God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant. You shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants, after you throughout their generations. Ten, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after your after you, every male child among you shall be circumcised. 11, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign. Did you see that? It shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. The sign of a covenant. I told you covenant has four parts. One of them is the token or sign of the covenant. So God said to Abraham, I've come and declared my covenant with you. You want to enter that covenant, then you accept the token. The sign of the covenant shall be this. You circumcise. Abraham was already an old man. But he did what God said as a sign of the covenant. Let's move on quickly. If then in verse 22, verse 22, oh, sorry, chapter 22, chapter 22, again, God reiterated here, you remember that in chapter 22, God told Abraham to go and sacrifice his only son, Isaac. So I read quickly from verse 15 because of time. Then the angel of the Lord Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you. Hallelujah. And multiplying I will multiply you. Multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. 18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice by this singular obedience. Here, God was already giving us what we call an archetype of himself and his son, Jesus Christ. Abraham had only one son. And God said, sacrifice him for me. Abraham obeyed. And God here announced to Abraham, he said, because you have done this, I too, God, will reciprocate what I have promised. I will bring my only son. He said, the seed from your seed, in your seed, all the nations of the earth. Seed, he did not say seeds. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. You will see confirmation of this in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. Let's go there quickly. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Are you there? Galatians chapter 3. Let's start reading from, verses, uh, from verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Which blessing? The blessing of the covenant that God gave to Abraham through Jesus Christ. As we can see here, 13 again, Christ has redeemed us. Our redemption is backed up by a covenant called the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. 14 again, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. 15, brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. 16, 
Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at 17. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. So the covenant already preceded the law by how many years? 430 years. So through Jesus Christ, we who are Gentiles have been brought into this covenant as God has promised. Glory be to God. Concerning the covenant, therefore, we'll just take two more scriptures and then we go into the uh, final discussion on this covenant and then we we'll take the Holy Communion. Praise the name of the Lord, because now you will understand the Holy Communion better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. Hebrews 10, 17 and 18. What does the Bible say there? Hebrews 10, 17 and 18. Let's start from 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Okay, we'll just stop there at 17, 16 and 17 rather. Hebrews 10, 16 and 17. So God said, by this covenant, it will be in the heart. His righteousness he will put in the heart. And what is the promise here? He will forgive all sins. Hallelujah. And he will remember them no more. So this again confirmed the redemption, isn't it? That we have been redeemed from sin and from the power of Satan. Satan brought sin, sin brought death, and we have been redeemed and thereby restored to the original state. Now let's go to our popular scripture for communion. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 20. Luke 22, verse 20. And we'll Luke 22, verse 20. Are you there? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Verse 20 says, Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shared for you, which is shared for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21 calls it the everlasting covenant. Amen. Of the blood of Jesus, which is where we derive our theme of today. The everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. Now let's summarize. I told us about the four components of a covenant. Number one, purpose of the covenant from all that we have read. And there are many other scriptures. You will see what is the purpose of this covenant that God has made with humankind through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Through Abraham, that he gave the promise and fulfilled by Jesus Christ, his son. The purpose of the covenant we can see in Genesis 12, 3, that it is for all families of the earth to be blessed. He said all families of the earth shall be blessed. What does this mean? Salvation. Redemption. Again, in, it says in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 22, 18. Praise the name of the Lord. 22, 18. And we have also seen in that Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verses 17 and 18, that God makes promises there for us. So 
the covenant purpose is for man's redemption, is for man's salvation. As John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's for man's salvation, restoration back to God. Now, the terms of the covenant are many. From God's side, because terms is about God's responsibility and man's responsibility, right? On God's side, we can mention a few. Forgiveness of sins, as we have just seen. Number two, deliverance from the power of Satan, Colossians 1.13. Number three, God promises to be our Father and our God, our God and our Father. Amen? God is your Father. All this by covenant. Four, to restore man to original blessings at as it was in Eden, which includes what? Health, prosperity, peace, joy. No wonder Jesus said he is the Prince of Peace. What is man's own responsibility? Number one, repentance and to receive Jesus, the gift of God. Number two, to have faith in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. Number three, to obey him, obey God, obey his commandment, and a whole lot of responsibilities that man also has. To come into this covenant, he has to come to Jesus Christ. As the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus himself spoke. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Token and sign of the covenant, therefore, is what? What is that token, the sign of the covenant? Like God told Abraham, he said, I have made a covenant with you. Now, this is the sign of the covenant. What was the sign given to Abraham? Circumcision, right? It was what? What is the sign of the covenant that God has given to us now? Holy communion. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why I said you will now understand the Holy Communion better. So let's look at it again and read 19 and 20 of Luke chapter 22. This was Jesus speaking here. He said, and he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The sign of the covenant is for remembrance. And so you will know. It is for remembrance, both on your side and on God's side. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 20, likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. If you go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you remember Paul said there from verse 23, he said, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread as he was about to go to die. He said, this is what you will do. So you will know I have a covenant. There is a covenant between you and God. And you will remember that I died for this covenant to be established. 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, what happens? You proclaim the Lord dead till he comes. As often as you do it. This is the token, the sign of the covenant. So as we eat and drink, we proclaim the Lord's death, that we have entered into everlasting covenant with God, the covenant of the blood of Jesus. Now, how about the seal? The seal of the covenant. 
which gives it its power and its authority is the blood of Jesus. Is what? The blood of Jesus. We have been sealed by the blood of the everlasting covenant. Glory be to God. And Jesus Christ himself is the mediator of this covenant. He himself, he, he died, he rose from the dead. Unlike the covenant of human beings, that another person will mediate Jesus himself. He died and rose and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us day and night. He is the mediator of this new covenant. He is the one that reconciled man and God. The go between man and God. Again, that scripture, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Glory be to God. Oh, Father, we thank you. And so, brothers and sisters, as we eat and drink, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And we are declaring that we are in the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. So we're going to eat. And then we will enter into intense prayer. Intense prayer for healing, for deliverance, and for salvation. For salvation, for healing, and for deliverance. Are you ready? Let us pray for the bread. And he took bread. Give thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the body of Jesus Christ, broken for us. Bless this bread of Holy Communion as we eat it in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take the bread and eat. Let us pray for the cup. Father in heaven, thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. Bless this cup of holy communion as we drink it in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Say amen. Let us drink as we renew ourselves and our faith in the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ, the new covenant. Let us drink. Oh, thank you, my Father. Thank you, our Lord. Go ahead and thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Just go ahead and give God thanks. Give him thanks. Father, I thank you for the body of Jesus broken for me. I thank you for the blood of Jesus shed for me. I thank you for the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. I receive this covenant. I receive the covenant. I enter into the covenant. I accept the covenant. And every responsibility on me of, of the covenant, whatever requirement there is of me, I accept all in of the covenant, in the covenant. And Father, I thank you for the blessing of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the power of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. I thank you, our Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. We're going to pray again and say, Heavenly Father, let the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus speak for me and my family now, in Jesus' name. Go ahead and pray that prayer, Heavenly Father. Let the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus speak for me. Speak for me. That blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, let the covenant speak for me. Let the covenant, the covenant, the covenant, the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus speak for me and my family right now. The everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus speak for my brothers and sisters, speak for everyone that is present here in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Raise your voice to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, let the blood of the everlasting covenant and all every other covenant operating in my life and in my family. Heavenly Father, let the blood 
of the everlasting covenant. Let that covenant, let the blood of the everlasting covenant annul every other covenant operating in my life. Let that blood annul every other covenant by the covenant that I have with you, almighty God. The covenant of the blood of Jesus and every other covenant be annulled. Go ahead and pray. Pray that prayer fervently. Pray that prayer fervently. Every other covenant that is operating in my life, however you came, the blood of Jesus supersedes every other covenant, supersede every other requirement. And so right now, let the blood of Jesus annul, cancel, destroy every other covenant that has been operating in my life. Covenant by spirits, covenant by man, covenant by material, whatever covenant is operating in my life. Let the blood of Jesus, the covenant that I have with God, by the blood of Jesus, annul, supersede, overtake every other covenant. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You see, there are different types of covenant. But anybody will tell you that the covenant of the blood, the blood covenant is the highest form of covenant. And so God has made a blood covenant with us, sealed by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, this blood is different because it is sinless blood. There is no other sacrifice that anybody can make to annul this covenant. Number one, he is sinless, sinless blood. There is nowhere you can find sinless blood of human being because all human beings are under sin except redeemed, delivered by the blood of Jesus. Number two, Jesus himself is the son of the living God. His name is higher than every other name. So there is nothing else created by God that is equal with Jesus, that is at the same level. And so raise your voice again and say, by the covenant of the blood of Jesus, I annul, I cancel, I condemn, I reject every other covenant that has been operating in my life. I say every other covenant that has been operating in my life and in my family, perish now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and by the new covenant that I have with God, through the blood of Jesus, I reject, I renounce every other covenant. I say you are powerless. I render you useless. I render you powerless. I render you important in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We want to join our faith and pray that prayer for one another now because this is powerful. This is the crux of it. We are breaking every other covenant. Join your voices together. I say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we agree together and we submit ourselves under the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. And we ask now that every other covenant over our lives, over our families, be destroyed now by the blood of Jesus, by the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. And every other covenant operating in us, operating in me, operating in my brothers and sisters, operating over everyone that is connected upon this program now. Let that other covenant be silent, be destroyed, be annulled by the everlasting blood of Jesus Christ, by the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. We are under the covenant of the blood of Jesus. We have been redeemed, backed up by this everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. And therefore we command every other covenant, be silence forever, perish forever, be destroyed forever, be annulled forever. We reject every other covenant over our life. We reject every other covenant over our families. We reject every other covenant over our destinies. We reject every other covenant speaking against us, speaking. Whether for or against us, we reject, we renounce you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now use your own voice again and say, I renounce every token of evil covenant. By the blood of Jesus, I renounce every token of evil covenant. By the blood and the name of Jesus Christ, let them cease to function in my life and family, 
In the name of Jesus. Let me explain that a bit to you. Like I told you about the token, that is the sign of the covenant. Oh, time will fail us. If you go to Genesis, we can't go there now. Jacob and Laban, uh, Genesis, uh, I believe, uh, chapter 30 from verse 43. Jacob and Laban made a covenant. And they said, let this stone be the token. This stone remains a sign. I will not cross this stone to your side. And you will not cross this stone to my side to come and do me any evil. And then they begin to declare the terms and conditions of the covenant. And they put their hands on that stone as a sign. Whatever token has been made in your body, for some people, they have made a mark in their bodies. And so they don't know how to get out of it. Every token, whether they hear it in the ground. Some people, parents make covenants. And they took the token and threw it into the waters. They said, let me see how this covenant, you will get out of it. You are coming out of it. Open your mouth and say, I renounce. I reject every token of evil covenant made on my behalf, operating in my life. From today, I command you in the name of Jesus, cease to function. By the blood of Jesus, I annul you. Evil token, token of evil covenant, I annul you. I command you cease to function. Cease to function. In my life, cease to function. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Take one minute. Take one minute. This one is serious. This one is deep. Or the one who knows what token has been operating in your own life and in your own family. So go ahead and pray. If you know the name of it, command it to go. Command it to cease to function. Cover it with the blood of Jesus. This is the time to begin to cover that which you know by the blood of Jesus and that which you don't know. Speak the blood of Jesus. Cover every token. Every token of evil covenant that has been made in my life. Made for me. Made on my behalf. Knowing, unknowing, whatever agreement, whatever contract I have entered into, knowingly or unknowingly, today every token of evil covenant, the blood of Jesus, I know you. I know you by the blood of Jesus. I render you useless and powerless in my life. Every evil token, every token of evil covenant, every sign of evil covenant, every symbol of evil covenant, Cease to function today in my life, in my wife, in my children, in my business, in my career, in anything that concerns me, in my destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree. In Jesus' mighty name, I command. Do evil, token, token of evil covenant. Do token of evil covenant. Cease to function. I overcome you. I overpower you by the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. Let every activity. Every oppression of that evil token cease to function, cease to walk, cease to operate in my life and in my family. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Lift up your voices again and say, by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the everlasting covenant, and by the everlasting covenant that I have with God, in the name of Jesus, let every evil covenant and the time that link me to that evil covenant. Be separated now. Be separated now. I separate myself. Every link with any evil covenant, I separate the link from my life. I separate the link of my family, my wife, my children. Every link to any evil covenant, any evil agreement, I separate the link by the blood of Jesus and the everlasting covenant that I have with God. In the name of Jesus, I separate the link. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Speak with me and say, it is written. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right now, I confess, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my King. I give my life to Jesus. I surrender all to Jesus. Lord Jesus, I am a new creation in you right now. Let every old thing pass away. Every old evil covenant pass away. Every old evil contract pass away. Every old evil relationship pass away. Every old evil agreement pass away. Every old evil uh, uh, decree pass away. Whatever 
is evil. In my life, let them pass away. I am a new creation now. I enter into a fresh new life in Christ Jesus by the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty King. In Jesus' name we are praying. Pray this and say, Heavenly Father, that all the blessings of the everlasting covenant manifest in my life now and my family in Jesus' name. Father God, that all the blessings of the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus manifest in my life and in my family in the name of Jesus. Let divine health, divine healing, divine prosperity, divine protection, divine promotion, divine preservation overtake me now by the everlasting blood of Jesus. The everlasting blood, the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus overtake me now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer and mention them now. You are getting healed. You're getting delivered. You're getting saved in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Want to pray for healing and deliverance? We we'll start with deliverance. But before we do that, one more time, have you given your life to Jesus? Have you given your life to Jesus? And so, every one of us, let's just lift up our voices wherever you are. And again, tell him, Lord Jesus, I come to you. And I plunge in that blood that you have shed for me. Wash me. Make me clean. Make me whole. Heavenly Father, forgive me every sin, every iniquity, every transgression, every error, every mistake. I repent of my sins. Father, forgive me. In the name of Jesus. If this is the first time you have just given your life to Jesus, go ahead again and tell him, Almighty God, break the power of sin in my life. Let me not go back to those sins. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now give me your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, quicken me, change me, transform me, and let me live to fulfill the will and the purpose of God for my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Obadiah 117 says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So when you are delivered, you are healed. You will be able to enjoy the blessings of God meant for you. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, 15 through 20. We're going to use that. I think we'll just take the scripture for healing and deliverance together. And then we'll just pray. Mark chapter 16. If we start from verse 15, hear what happened here. Jesus was speaking here. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. What is the condition for performing these signs and wonders? Believe in Jesus. What is the condition? Believe in Jesus. That's it. See it there in verse 17. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will do what? Cast out devils. Look at verses 19 and 20. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, 
like we have been preaching here. Amen? And what happened? The Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs, signs. Amen? Wherever the word of God is preached, in the name of Jesus, Jesus himself confirms his word. Are you there? The word of Jesus will be confirmed right now. Jesus himself will confirm the word of God in your life. He says, cast out devils. There are three ways healing takes place. And you see, science teaches some things. At times, some people think science is uh, contrary to faith in God. No, science is not. Rather, science confirms. In science, you are, we are taught that for you to transfer force, you go by three means, conduction, convection, and by radiation, conduction. So you see here, Jesus said, lay hands on the sick, and you will see the demonstration Jesus himself made. When you lay hands, power flows, that is conduction. And you will also see, like the woman with the issue of blood, she touched the hem of his garment, and the Bible says that virtue flowed into her. That is convection, when a medium carries the power and the person receives healing. You also know about Paul in Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 12, to 11 and 12. There the Bible says that the handkerchief that was taken from the apron, taken from the body of Paul. Because if we talk about Peter, you say, oh, he was a disciple. He was there with Jesus Christ. Paul was not there with Jesus. He repented as a sinner like you and I have repented. And God filled with the Holy Spirit. And he did the same. Jesus confirmed the, his word in his life with signs and wonders. So the apron that was taken from Paul healed the sick. Oh, if you say, okay, Paul had an encounter, a unique encounter with Jesus. How about Stephen? Stephen, in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, the Bible says that Stephen did mighty signs and wonders. I want us to read that one. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. It says, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Praise the name of the Lord. So Colossians 1.13 says that God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the son of his Lord. And so every oppression, possession of the devil in your life is a violation of the word of God. And we are here to enforce the word of God. Are there signs that the devil has troubled your life, has possessed your body? Wherever you are, just raise your hand as I pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for your deliverance that you have delivered us, you have redeemed us already. Jesus has destroyed the devil. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for you have given us the power and the authority in your name to cast out devil. Now, right now, you foul spirit, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Live that life. Everyone that has raised his or her hand, connecting with this prayer right now, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Devil, get out of that body. Demons, get out of that body. Today, I terminate your operation in that body. I cut off every link that you have with that line. In mighty name of Jesus, you yourself lift up your voice and say, thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Say, Satan, I reject you. I renounce you. In the name of Jesus, get out of my life. I embrace Jesus. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. Thank you, Jesus for saving me. 
Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is done for you. That's it. It is done. The devil cannot tamper. He cannot. Because the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. I want to pray for the sick now. And we're going to go through the three steps. The first step is by conduction. You see, I'm here, so I'm not with you. But let's just open to uh, Luke. I think we use Luke. Okay, let's, uh, let's use uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 8, 1, 2, 3. Let's use Matthew. We can also look at Luke. Yeah? Luke chapter 8, 43 to 48. And let's look at Matthew, Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, the story of the leper. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Three. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately. His leprosy was cleansed. Glory be to God. So, conduction. You're going to put your hand as I speak according to Mark chapter 16, verse 18. He said, they will take up serpent, and if they drink anything deadly, eat you, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So you're laying hands, you believe. Don't you believe? Say, I believe. I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in, the, in God Almighty. And now pray with me and say, in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hands in obedience to God, in obedience to the word of God, I command every sickness in my body, get out now. Go now, in the name of Jesus. Say you, my body, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, to, through the tips of my fingers, every cell in my body, in the name of Jesus, be healed. It is written, he that believes shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. I lay hands on myself, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, I am healed of them all. I am healed of you all right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we'll go straight to radiation. By radiation, when it just jump from one point to the other. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In that same Luke that we looked at, or let's use Matthew, let's use Matthew, Luke chapter 8, 43, 48, I talked about. Let's look at Matthew, let's use Matthew chapter 8 as well. The story of the centurion, the case of the centurion servant, you remember? He said the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. Only speak a, a word, and my servant will be healed. We jump to 10. He said, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, as surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. 12, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. Why would they be cast out? Because of unbelief. So you believe now. 13, then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. What did the centurion say? Say, only speak the word. Only speak the word. And you know, Jesus said, if we ask anything in his name, it will be done. And so I want to speak the word over you. 
Isaiah chapter 53 is the word I want to speak. Verse 5. The Bible says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I command your body to be healed now. Receive the word of God and be healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever infirmity is in your body, mention that infirmity now and agree with me and say, you infirmity, go from my body. In the name of Jesus, you infirmity, that infirmity, go from my body. In the name of Jesus, that sickness, go. In the name of Jesus, that disease, go. Whatever it is, I command it to go right now, right now. In the name of Jesus, you that have been having repeated uh, fever, and they say it is malaria, it is typhoid, you go and treat, and it comes back. That cyclic sickness, I command it to go right now. In the name of Jesus. You that have been suffering from depression, I command the demon of that depression to go. And I command all your body system to be adjusted right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, depression keeps to function in that body. Be healed of that depression. In the mighty name of Jesus, migraine, migraine, be healed of that headache. In the name of Jesus, be healed of every mental sickness and diseases. In the mighty name of Jesus, be healed of every form of sickness. Wherever you are, whatever sickness is in your body, however it has come, in the name of Jesus, I command the link to be cut off. I command the symptom to cease. I command the root of that sickness to be destroyed and get out of your body. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Now go ahead and thank God and say, I have been redeemed to the blessings of God, to that original state in God. I have been redeemed to the original fellowship with God. I have been redeemed to the original relationship with God. I am a son of God through the sacrifice of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for my redemption. I have been redeemed to health. I have been redeemed to prosperity. I have been redeemed to righteousness. I have been redeemed into the kingdom of God. I have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Heavenly Father, thank you for redeeming me. I thank God for my redemption. Now, I shall shine forth. The glory of God shall shine forth in my life. The light of God shall shine forth in my life. And in my family. And in all that concerns me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father, Pour your Holy Spirit upon me. In the name of Jesus, baptize me now afresh, afresh. Let the fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, the one who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, baptize me now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Renew me in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty King. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You will experience everything turning around in your life and in your family, in your career, in your business. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking on kingdom. The kingdom and kingdom has to do with authority. So make it a time, 6 p.m., and we'll continue with our fasting and prayer. Please drink water because we are going on a long fast. So drink water. We say fasting is six to six. Don't depend on your flesh. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit to give you the strength. 
And if you're having any um, reason, any reason that does not permit you to fast, please, you're not under any uh, compulsion. It is a spiritual exercise that you should willingly, willingly participate. And the blessing of this exercise will continue to be the portion of all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Tomorrow we will take some testimonies because I already have plenty of testimonies. Oh, glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name. This is where we will close. We want to share the grace now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow me, follow you all the days of your life, of my life, in Jesus' name. This is where we say bye-bye, and we'll connect tomorrow. The Almighty God bless you. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.